Uh, so thank you for coming today, especially on this lovely, beautiful, <laughs> rainy day. <laughs> We're glad to see everybody here. And a special thank you to the Wilmington Library for hosting us today. So we're excited to welcome everyone today. We come together today to celebrate something that has been many, many, many years in the making and many, many, many partners that have been involved in this work. The Delaware Readiness Teams are a statewide initiative that brings together early learning providers, community members, school representatives, and families to help support kids get ready for school and life. And one of the things that we have heard for years is how challenging the registration process has been. So today we are actually celebrating not only the launch of the kindergarten registration campaign, but we are also celebrating the initial registration, the universal registration system that has been developed by the state. So Tracy is actually going to demonstrate that for us. But before we get to that, <laughs> um, we do have some supports of resources that are available for families for the registration campaign. Now, kindergarten registration is for children that will be age five on or before August 31st, 2023. And we do have some special supports for that. But before we get to that, I wanna tell you a little bit about the history of how, how we got here. And for that history, for years, we have heard how challenging this process is for families. There was confusing timelines. There was confusing processes. There was also inconvenient methods for registering their child. And then on the flip side, we heard from the schools that children weren't registered on time and therefore they didn't have the staff that they needed, the resources and the space. So the Delaware readiness teams went to work and we put together information packets for families to really help explain what the process is, help them better understand what types of resources they needed when they register. And in 2018, a proclamation was signed declaring November as Kindergarten Registration Month in our state. Now, even with all these efforts, families still found it challenging to get their child registered because there were still different processes and paperwork that families had to navigate. So last year, Senate Bill 82 was passed, and this was a universal registration system. So as of October 1st, this registration system was launched by Department of Education. And we are celebrating that today because this is a system that is going to be used by all of the districts for new enrollment. And it is gonna be a much easier system for families to navigate. So we are gonna actually, view, yay! <laughs> we are gonna view this system today and we would like to share some kindergarten registration information packet information with you. This is what it looks like. We are taking the month of October, getting all of this information for everybody so we can get it out. It is going to include a checklist for registration, all of the steps you need to take to register your child, as well as all of the documents that you need to gather in order to register your child. All of our copies are available front for English and back for Spanish. In the folder, it also has a list of all of the districts and all of the charters that offer kindergarten in our state. Again, in English and Spanish with some contact information for those schools. We have in here a kindergarten academy invitation and we are going to get to that a little bit later. We'll explain that a little bit more. <laughs> That's the fun part. <laughs> there is a school choice postcard in so you must register in your home district before you utilize school choice. This tells you a little bit about the timeline and where to go to get information about school choice. There is a Delaware Readiness Team postcard in here. All the information we're sharing today, along with videos and information about the Kindergarten Academy is on our website. So you can visit our website for more information. There is some developmental screening information in here. There is also a pocket guide to developmental milestones. So the different milestones that children are reaching, here is a snapshot of what that would be. We also have a library card for everybody. And then there's information in there too about wraparound services. So as your child goes into kindergarten, you may be looking for before care or after care, and this is to help guide you through that process. The other thing that's in here is a book, Joshua and Jasmine Go to Kindergarten. This book is actually specific to Delaware. 
It's about two siblings that are getting prepared for their transition into kindergarten. And the actual the illustrations were from right here, right down in Dover. And then to go along with the book, there's a scavenger hunt. So we want children to not only be reading the book, but doing some other activities that prepare them for the transition. So that is our kindergarten packets that we have. There's going to be some additional information uh, added to that about lead awareness as well as um, oral health. And our folders look like this. They may be in green or they may be in blue. So if you see a blue folder, it could be either color. Uh, we typically give out a number of books or a number of these folders. So they're in two different colors. And so before we get to the demo with Tracy, I did just want to say a special thank you to all of our sponsors and all of our partners. Thank you to the Office of Early Learning. Thank you to uh, Longwood Foundation. Thank you to Welfare Foundation, Prevent Child Abuse Delaware, as well as Arch Cannon Fund. We also want to thank our library partners. They are a huge supporter of all of the work we do. And everybody that's involved in this, which really is everybody, our early learning providers, our districts, our charters, our community members, and also a special thank you to Tracy, who has been just such a great support to us as we do outreach to kids and families to get them registered for community. So Tracy, take it away. Okay. Um, Diane uh, did a little history. My involvement as the honorary chair of the kindergarten registration campaign started six years ago because 25 years ago, I flunked kindergarten registration in the state of Delaware. I could not figure it out. Uh, so when the opportunity, did, when somebody said, let's make it easier, I was like, yes, let's. So it's been a privilege to be involved and to, uh, for the last six years, the effort has been going on longer than that, at least I think 10 years. Uh, so this is a real celebra celebratory occasion. It's a triumphant day to have this universal online system so that everybody can help any anybody do it. Your librarians can help you do it, no matter what your district is, no matter what you're trying to do. Community centers, everybody can help everybody. And it is a much simpler process. It is not perfect yet. Everybody knows that. This went live October 1st. This is October 4th. It's not perfect yet. So one of the reasons we're uh, trying to show it now and raise awareness now is it so that we can make improvements through the month of October. So when we launch kindergarten registration in November, this system is the best that it can be in this short time. So I am 60 years old. This is not my laptop. The Department of Education <laughs> estimates that it will take someone of kindergarten parent age a half hour to do this. So it would probably take me 45 minutes. Uh, but we're not going to do all of that. Diane has kindly pre-populated some of the fields so we can do a quick run through of the site rather than watching me labor through this very unfamiliar. The letters are in the same place, but they're not the same. It's not the same size. So uh, thank you for your indulgence. And usually I ask the youngest person in the room to help me. So I'm glad to see we have some friends available. Okay, so the first step would be to set up an account with a username and password, like everybody does for everything, right? So that's very straightforward. Your email will be your username. You will create a password. It is best to have a password that can be remembered. And that, once you've done that, you come here, right? This is the original. I'm sorry? So this is where you would go to get your username. Oh, this is where you go to get your username. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, and we're going to go down to registration beginning October 1st. So you see the list of documents you need, which of course are good to gather before you start. And uh, again, being not a digital native, uh, I used to scan documents and email them to myself. I did that for years until I realized I could take a picture. And then it's on my phone and I can submit the document way easier that way. So. Uh, a reminder that you do not have to scan your document any, in any fancy way. Uh, register for public school 2023 and 4. That's what we want to do. And we're going to register for K. Uh, I'm going to, we ha you have to enter, this is one thing that needs a little bit of work, you have to enter a residential address. It has to be a valid residential address. We're working on that uh, to serve homeless families because you can't enter a shelter address or a library address. So that's something that we hope to get uh, taken care of before November 1st. For now, I am entering someone else's address. I 
Again, not my laptop, pardon me. Bogstone Beach Road, that's not right. How do, you, how do I get to new back? I am here on your fancy laptop. Oh, it's a touch screen. <laughs> it's big Stone Beach Road. Not possibly used to them. See, this is a very honest demonstration of someone uh, not terribly confident with this. And then we're going to find our home school, or zone school, rather. Address verified, so, so far so good. And there's our, there's our school we want to go to. So we're going to begin the registration process with what's been identified as our district. Oh, here's your account. <laughs> so you would, here's where you would create an account. Diane already has one for us. And we're, we're What's that? Let them know who we're registering today. Oh, I have to let you know who we're registering today. We're registering <laughs> Baby Blue Hen. Um, you see there, and who is the, on the My First Library card. So we're registering Baby Blue Hen. This, yep. In process. In, pro in progress, so you don't have to wait 45 minutes for me to do everything. Now, a lot of these are the, the answers we've entered, Diane has entered, the answers that make for the fewest number of steps. So um, uh, if you click yes, you may get some more questions to answer. Just doing this, I said, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> start at the beginning. Oh, uh, okay. So you can, now, you can click next at the bottom of each page, or you can use the left-hand menu under form. To, to, so you don't have to do them in order, and you can, you, don't have, you can come back. You don't have to do it all at once. You can come back and finish. Um, the main reason it's like this with the, each section separated is so it will work on a cell phone. So it's not just one long process. It'll work on a cell phone because of this kind of menu. So there are the documents you need. Some are, you might not need transcripts, you might not need IEP, you might not need 504, you might not need public school registration. Okay, I'm gonna push next. Because again, I'm old and don't, <laughs> don't like to jump around. Yes, I'm trying to register, register for K. There's our address, it found us, that's good. There's our zone school, there's our school. Completing this form, yes. And a reminder, even if you wanna do school choice, you have to do your school of residence first. Okay, so here we are, student information. Again, Diane has done this so we can go fast. We're registering Baby B Blue Hen. Uh, it's the birth date, there's our address we put in. Same as the physical address, phone number. Okay, next. It's not a temporary living arrangement for Baby Blue Hen. Uh, we're saying no to this question. If you say yes, will other questions pop up to that one? So we do that, we do that, place of birth, Milford. Okay, and then again, some of these are the answers that result in the fewest number of questions for purposes of demonstration, but say, um, let's see, we'll put like pre-kindergarten experience. If the child has gone to one of our wonderful early childhood education providers, we'll put yes, and then you'll see the additional questions about where your, where your child went to, uh, pre-K or, or other early childhood program. Next, here comes the family, Mommy Blue Hen and Daddy Blue Hen. And also it's worth noting, this is no, no new information is required. This is not an, no, nobody's asking any questions they didn't answer be, ask before. It's just online instead of on paper. And the nice thing about it, say, when you get to this next section, Right now, if baby blue hen does have siblings, all the information for the family is going to be in there. So that's a nice time saver, where before you got three big packets of paper for three kids, so that is a good thing. Here's our emergency contacts. Uh, might be worth noting if you're gonna have an additional, oh, and an after before care provider question. 
Uh, this is, I guess, where you prioritize your emergency contacts, who first, who second. And if you want to add more, you have to make sure before you start, you have the phone numbers and emails for those people. Whether there's a military connection, we have not applicable for baby blue hen. Uh, physician, now Diane's son came up with these doctor names, so Dr. Health <laughs> is baby blue hen's primary care, and hen hospital is preferred. The dentist is Dr. Smile. And then there's a quick health history. Again, we've made things very simple. Um, if you check yes for asthma, this question pops up, please describe. So give, just to give you an idea, if you, again, if you push yes for some of these, you'll be asked for more information. But we're doing, we're doing it the quick way. Uh, you can see, the, again, very familiar questions to anybody who's done this. I like this uh, permission for baby blue hen to have the following medications administered by the school nurse. I was the mom who said, whatever the school nurse wants to administer is good by me. And so all these things are checked. Okay for the school nurse to give baby blue hen any of those things. The nurse wants to give them to me, that would also be fine. Uh, so we got K, what language did your student first learn? Baby blue hen also speaks Spanish at home. Next, this is the agricultural work survey. So that is, again, we have the simplest answers. And here we're agreeing. The student handbook, that's a live link you see up there, that will pop up for your, there'll be the handbook for the district. So whatever district is your school of residence, that's the one that'll pop up there. Next, uh, this is the document upload where I have learned finally to take pictures of documents. <laughs> Uh, so they can be uploaded. They can also be sent to the school in hard copy form. So you see that option. I think for the um, things you may or may not have, like EET, uh, we're going to work on adding an option that says not applicable. So you don't have to choose. Oh, maybe just do that. Okay, it's already there. Thank you. A for the DOE. And now I'm going to certify I agree. Electronic signature, that's Mommy Blue Hen. And this is my favorite page, actually, because it tells me what I have not done, what is all complete and what is not complete. So the, where there's red, there's something I haven't done, one thing. I did not put a, a phone type. So I have to go back and do that. So that's the summary page, which is just a check on yourself to make sure you've done everything right. And that, my friends, is that. So that's a little bit of a cheater version because we didn't fill in all the fields live, but uh, you can see it's very much the same process, just online and the same for every district, which I, again, I very much appreciate. And I think there's a, um, an equity issue to it too, because people who can't take off work to go to the school can do this whenever they can. Uh, it puts school choice information, presents that in a more equitable way. So I think there's an equity issue too that I appreciate. Um, and again, it's a, it's a great day to, to be able to celebrate having this and thank you to everyone who has worked on it so hard for so long. So thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, and I have a job. Um, <laughs> representing the Department of Education today, well, Caitlin's also here and John's also here, but Dr. Cora Scott. <laughs> Um, most recently, I come from Brandywine School District as assistant superintendent, and so some of the things that you heard mentioned, um, you know, I saw that play out and live that for our families. Um, trying to register students um, can be an overwhelming experience for families, and when the systems are not um, streamlined and user-friendly, it makes that experience more overwhelming, and so I'm excited to see this come to fruition. and. Um, the fact that every school district, our libraries, our community partners will be able to support families um, regardless of where they live through this process is um, going to make things um, a lot simpler. I've lived through um, registration events, helping families. Um, I have lived through going to Head Start and community child care centers and um, watching the confusion because one family lived in Brandywine, and one family lived in Christina, and different forms and different um, processes. And so I do think that this is going to make the
family experience much better. Um, and um, I'm excited to kind of see it play out. I think um, you mentioned a lot around equity and access. And I think the past few years through the pandemic, we've seen this um, compounded, the registration process um, for families compounded, um, making it more difficult. And so I think this is a perfect answer to some of those challenges. So thank you to the First Lady and the readiness teams and the library and the community partners and special thanks to Caitlin and the um, early childhood support team for all their work to make this happen. So, yay, good job, thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you, Department of Education. We even had found some tweaks from yesterday, and they've already been updated, which is just so amazing. So, uh, as Tracy mentioned, we're going to be looking for feedback to give to them for the system, and you know, user friendly is what we're looking for. So, we want to make sure that um, all families not only have access to it, but to a system that is going to really support them. Uh, everything that we did have, as I mentioned, is in the kindergarten registration information packet. So all of the steps that Tracy was taking is in there. I don't know if I mentioned this, but we have a sign-up sheet for the registration folders that's available. So you can sign up to get those folders if you're a program. They will also be at all of the libraries by the end of the month. So we are taking October to get everything together so that we are ready to launch for the November as our kindergarten registration month. And with that, I know you may say, November kindergarten registration, you're kicking off in October. Why is it so early? And really, we really want to help make sure that we're preparing the children for the transition into kindergarten, not only to get them registered, but then to connect them to all of the different resources that are out there to support. And so I, now's the fun part. <laughs> We have a virtual kindergarten academy that will be conducted. It is, we have an invitation that is in the folder. I mentioned this earlier. It will begin in November, and it will be from November to May, the second Tuesday of every month. There is a child session that happens at 6 o'clock on that first Tuesday of every month, and then the very next night on Wednesday, that same session will be in Spanish. It is a variety of different topics. We take the information, we have been working on this framework with the Office of Early Learning for quite some time, doing some tweaks and things like that. Uh, it is based on the Early Learning Survey, which is conducted on children within their first 30 days of entering uh, kindergarten. And we have taken some of those skills and activities and scaled them down so that families can get a better expectation of what types of things kids are going to be expected to do in kindergarten. And with that, we usually started off with a piece of literature and then do a whole bunch of activities based on some of the different topics for that evening. And the different topics that we have are social studies, social emotional, we have health and safety, language and literacy, science, math, and then a new one, easing transitions into kindergarten. So to give you a little sample of the kindergarten activity, we have Cami here with us today, and she is the Delaware Readiness Team Hispanic Community Coordinator, and she's actually going to be doing a demo for us on uh, one of the activities that we've done before in the Kindergarten Academy. That time. And, and right now I am speaking English, but during my session, it's 100% um, Spanish. So for example, if the topic is science, we would do a science um, activity. So for example, our activity today is children's science, and we will use a scientific method to present the activity. So I think this is it, right? OK, so first we would set up the purpose of the activity by saying, I was washing fruit to make a fruit salad, and I noticed that some of the fruit floated, but some of the fruit sank to the bottom. So it made me wonder which fruits will float and which will sink. Okay, so if I was to do this in Spanish, I would say, uh, preparemos la presentación introduciendo el propósito de la actividad. Estaba lavando mi fruta para una ensalada y noté fruta que se hundió y fruta que flotó. So, viso pensar, pensar cuál fruta va a flotar y cuál se va a hundir. Okay? So that was in Spanish. I don't know if there's anyone here that speaks Spanish, but like I said before, if you know anyone that speaks uh, Spanish, have them log into this class. Uh, we use literature as a base for all of the kindergarten 
academy activities. Um, for science, we will use nonfiction text. Okay. Usamos literatura como una base en la academia. Vamos a practicar ciencias. Today we'll be practicing science. Um, it's very important to add to children's reading, which is nonfiction. Children are naturally curious, and learning to research through nonfiction text is an important skill to develop. So we would read a book that would fit what we're doing for that day. Um, so we would read a book about science. Um, let's see. All right, so then we would start the presentation. So today for our presentation, we have a collection of fruits here, and we have to make a hypothesis of our fruits, whether they will sink or they will float. So tengo unas colecciones de frutas para hacer nuestra investigación. Vamos a hacer una predicción si la fruta se hunde o si va a flotar. Okay, so beneath your chairs, you'll see a paddleboard. <laughs> Do you girls see the paddleboard right beneath your chairs? Okay. <laughs> so there's a F for float, and there's a S for sink. So the part that I need you guys to help me with is I need your predictions, okay? So before I put the fruit in the water, I need you guys to think if the fruit will sink or if it will float, okay? So let's start off small. And it's just a prediction, it's not like Yes, wrong. it's a prediction. You they can't be... that particularly when I did this. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot be wrong in your prediction. The important thing is to have you um, thinking, okay? So we're going to start with the orange. Oh, that's the first one. <laughs> so we're going to start with the orange. So what are your predictions? Are those locked in? Yes? So I have two sink and a float. Sink, sink, float, 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 sink, okay. Let's see. Oh, it floated. I think I saw somebody turn it around to F. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put a little star with float. Okay. So next we have this plum. So put up your predictions. Sink, float, float. Sink, sink, float, okay. Sink, float, sink, sink. I love the interaction with the adults. Thank you for participating. Oh, it sunk. Oh no. Yay. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is, okay. I need both of my hands. This is why I got this microphone. Okay, so now we have a watermelon. What are your predictions? Float, sink, float, sink, sink, float. Okay, let's see what it does. It's floating. It's floating. Who said floating? Good job. You did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to take the watermelon out. So it takes up the whole space. Okay, so next up we have a banana. So what are your predictions? <laughs> sink? You think it's going to sink? Sink, sink? Okay, so it looks like a lot of people think it's going to sink. Okay, let's see. It's floating. It's floating. Yes. Floating. <laughs> All right. So now we have an apple. Okay. So what do you? What's the prediction here? What's your hypothesis? I give you a hint, but this might just be for people my age. <laughs> Halloween. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, here it goes. It's floating. Good job. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it floated. And now we have a little blueberry. This one's hard. What do you guys think? Is it going to sink or is it going to float? Sink. Sink? Okay. Let's see. Oh, it sunk. It sunk. All right. Oh, oh. The ripe blueberries sink. If they're not ripe, at least yesterday, they float. <laughs> so it's also a good test. We'll see. Oh, all the blueberries. All the blueberries. Yes. We'll get rid of it in a So you're saying if they're floating, that means they're. That means they're not, the ripe ones sink. Okay. Okay. We just learned that yesterday. You just. <laughs> all right. So did you guys like that fun game? So it gets you thinking. Um, we can look at the results here on our board here. So was our hypothesis correct? Did some fruits float while others sank? How many fruits sank? How many fruits floated? What surprised you? How could these results be used? And how could you extend this investigation? What else can you test? OK? Vamos a analizar los resultados. Nuestra hipótesis fue correcto. ¿Cuántos, ¿Cuántas frutas se hundieron? ¿Cuántas frutas flotaron? ¿Qué te sorprendió? ¿Cómo se puede usar los resultados? ¿Cómo puedes seguir la investigación? All right. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to thank everybody for coming. We um, please spread the word about the Kindergarten Academy. We want to make sure we get as many kids there as possible. We do have the invitation flyers. And as I mentioned before, thank you for helping us spread the word about registration. And the kindergarten information packets will be available soon for everybody to distribute to their families. Okay, I just wanted to add, if you, if you guys really have a family that maybe needs more personalized help and they only their first language is um is spanish you guys can send them my way and i can assist them um one of the reasons why i took on this role was because i am the oldest daughter of immigrant parents that hadn't they obviously don't know english when they first came to this country so if there's someone there to help them with the process especially if you don't even know the language like it's already difficult if you, you know, were born here, you, you know English, but it's even harder if you don't understand the language, um, especially, and also technology. So if you personally know anyone, just send them my way and we can help them.